A Formula 1 car is one of the most complicated machines in the world. You need a team of engineers to start it and bring it up to the optimum heat to run correctly. And you need a driver who knows how to keep it running and tame its incredible power to go around a twisty and turny circuit. So, let's say you have an F1 car at your disposal and a team of engineers who know exactly what needs to be done to get the car up and running. Here is how to drive an F1 car during an F1 race. Step 1. Warming up the tires and brakes. Almost everything that needs to be taken care of when it comes to setting up the car is done by the engineers, except heating up the tires and brakes. When the drivers are out on the formation lap, you would have seen them driving the cars in a zigzag manner, especially in the last sector just before joining the grid. This is to ensure that the tires are warm enough for the race. Without the optimum temperature, the tires do not give you sufficient grip to go around the corners. Same applies to the brakes. If they are not warmed up, they do not perform sufficiently well to slow down the car enough to take the slower corners. Step 2. Managing the clutch at the start. The next thing to understand is the biting point of the clutch. This is extremely important when you start the car at lights out. F1 steering wheels have two clutch pedals, one on either side underneath the gear pedals. Valtteri Bottas explains in one of his videos from a couple of years back that he releases one pedal as the lights go off and the second one is maintained at the optimum level at the start to handle the car at the start of the race. Step 3. Hitting brakes at the right point and downshifting. Typically each corner in a circuit has a marker with the distance to the corner that gives you a rough idea when to hit the brakes. Depending on what type of tire you are on, your brake distance would vary. Brake distance would also vary based on the weather and track temperature. As soon as you reduce your speed, you should downshift to the optimum gear so that you can control the car properly. Step 4. Hitting the apex and accelerating. The best way to take a corner is to take more or less a straight line from the outside of the track, hitting the apex and then straightening out at the outside of the track. This ensures that you lose minimum time at the corners. As you gain speed, you again shift gears up to match your speed. You can rely on the shift lights on your steering wheel to know when to shift up. Step 5. Overtaking. If you get close enough to the car in front, you can attempt to overtake the car. The best way to do it is to enter into the slipstream of the car ahead which gives you more speed than usual. If you are in a DRS zone, you can switch it on to give you an extra bit of speed by reducing the car's drag by opening the back wings. If you are sufficiently close to the car in front, move to the other side of the track, complete the overtake and take back the racing line. If the overtake is being attempted at a corner, you will probably have to brake last and take the inside line of the car being overtaken and then control the car to make sure you don't go off the track. Step 6. Pit Stops in each race, a driver must run two different compounds of tires. This means you must do a pit stop sometime during the race. If you are running on a soft compound, you have to stop earlier than if you are running a hard compound. When your radio engineer tells you it is time, 
you come into the pit lane. Make sure you do not overspeed in the pit lane or you would get a penalty. You bring the car to your team's pit stop and then stop the car. Step 7. Managing tire wear and fuel. Each car will have several fuel modes depending on what the situation demands. But in general, you must make sure you do not run out of fuel before the end of the race. This might mean doing several slower, more fuel efficient laps in the race. Similarly, you must ensure your tires last until the next pit stop or until the end of the races depending on the strategy. Poor time, tire management could end up in a puncture or even a tire burst. Step 8. Park Ferme. Once the race is over, you must slow the car down and bring the car down to the Park Ferme where it will be infected by the Formula 1 crew. They would make several checks and ensure the car adheres to the regulations of that specific year. So there you have it. That is how you drive a F1 car during an F1 race. In reality, it is much more challenging than this however, with several modes that the driver has to change throughout the race, several technical issues he or she might face, and not the least the g-forces they experience throughout the race. Do you think you can drive an F1 car for a race? <laughs>